In a literal sense, my work could be viewed as part of uh, Canadian literature. However, my books are in neither official language. None has been published here. Few have been read here. My target audience uh, is almost exclusively in Ireland. Add to that that I was not born here, nor am I I'm a citizen, that I am merely a permanent resident with an attitude, possibly a bad attitude. <laughs> and the obvious answer is that uh, my work doesn't fit within the parameters of can lit at all nor does it fit within the parameters of work by natives or by non-anglophone or non-francophone uh, immigrants who use one of the official languages rather than their own first languages. However, my situation is, th is not that uncommon here. Canadian literary critics have come up with broad terms such as ethnic literature or emigre literature, lit uh, writing to describe works in non-official languages, but yet they still seem unsure how to respond to the phenomenon or how to evaluate the material. For example, the Canadian Con uh, Council for the Arts declares that it accepts application for funding under its grants for professional writers' creative writing scheme for projects in all languages, but then adds, if you submit a writing project in a language other than French or English, you must submit the original text along with a translated version in one of the official languages. To which I respond, if I'd wanted to write it in English in the first place, I would have done that. <laughs> the lists of, neg of negatives of writing in, in, in Irish in Canada do not, in reality, in my situation, been employed in a university, they don't really include uh, funding issues. But they do include a sense of isolation, of being out on the edge, of not belonging to a community, not so much of writers per se, but of the community of Irish speakers. Yes, I speak Irish with my children. Yes, I teach the language at various levels at the university. But uh, both of these situations are ones where I'm speaking the language at a fairly basic level without opportunity to, to use the language uh, as a spoken medium for discussing the whole spectrum of topics beyond that of routine conversation. Before I left Ireland in 1987, I'd never taught a class through the medium of English. Now, with few exceptions, I only teach in English. Before I left Ireland, I'd, I'd reached the stage where I'd be thinking through Irish, uh, um, where I was living whole uh, uh, areas, reams of my life through Irish. Now, I think through English. Inevitably, this affects one's writing. I find myself at times translating in my head from English into Irish and then frequently having to adjust the translation to a correct idiomatic form of the language. I know that this is not an unusual situation when a person is, uh, is bilingual and that in reality all it means when one is writing that one has to be careful to ensure the integrity of the forms used. However, this change in my ability to think in Irish and the increasing impact of English on my thought patterns represents for me not just a personal aggravation and practical difficulty to be surmounted by careful and judicious editing, but an illustration of the basic contradiction in my position of remaining here while writing in Irish. I was, I'm fascinated by a comment made by a man who knew something about contradictions and about being idergajir between two countries and at times in no man's land. Darcy McGee, addressing Irish Americans in 1866, had urged them to play a full and active role in their new host community rather than to be seduced by wild Fenian plans about freeing their homeland. He described these Irish Americans as being, and quote, camped but not settled in North America with foreign hopes and aspirations unshared by the people among whom they live, end of quote change the country from, uh, from America to Canada, move on over 140 years. McGee's description applies to me. Here I am with a good job and a comfortable existence, but I'm still a camper and a reasonably happy one, to boot, I must say. A, a citizen is a person who not merely has the legal status, but who has an emotional and psychological connection with the place. A person who's invested a part of himself in that place, a camper is one who arrives, who avails of the facilities, who, depending on the humour and the occasion, may contribute to the evening's en uh, enjoyment or whine that there's not enough hot water in the showers, but who doesn't really care about, what, about the long-term future of the place. But for with the dawning of the day, he'll be pulling up the stakes, pulling down the tent and moving on to the next lo location. While my attitude can appear burrish and ungracious, and in reality, I am, of course, I am thankful for the opportunities that Canada has given me. I acknowledge 
that if I have the freedom and luxury uh, to view myself as a camper, it has been earned by the contribution uh, of the Irish in Canada. And I recognise that my children do not necessarily share my view of the world about the importance of language or, for example, the, impor- the ho- uh, hopes about returning home. A while after ter- uh, returning from living in, in the Connemara Gaeltacht during uh, sabbatical leave, I asked my elder boy where he would prefer to live, in Connemara or in Halifax. Halifax, he said. Obviously, he and his, and his younger brother would go where we go, but unlike the, the situation when I first came to Halifax in 1987, Unlike the choice that I've made to continue writing in Irish, the choice of remaining or leaving is not mine alone. I don't know for definite how this little sort of family drama will play itself out. We may return and may be left continued write, continuing writing in Irish, both regretful of what has been lost and grateful for what has been gained. Time will tell. In the meantime, as I exit my tent, check the stakes and peruse the facilities around me, and as I think of, the, of that, this dilemma of being Idergard Jir and, and in no man's land, it strikes me that there may be the makings of a little story there. We'll see. Thanks very much. <laughs>